So I won't lie, that last leak code problem I did was actually pretty fun. So I'm gonna do another video and you guys can watch if you wanna try to solve it with me or or not, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so longest substring without repeating characters is the problem. And if I read this out to you all, given a string S, find the length of the longest substring. So if you don't know what a substring is, basically take some highlighted part in that string, that's a substring, okay? Without duplicate characters. So again, when you're trying to solve these problems, read through the examples and try to make sure you understand how they work. So input is ABC, ABC, BB. And just looking at this, you can tell that the longest substring is ABC because if you try to grab it anywhere else, like the C gets repeated, ABC, the B gets repeated, and then BB, obviously you can't take that one. So it looks like the output's three. Um, and the answer is ABC with the length of three. This one would be one because you have a bunch of repeating Bs, right? So obviously that can only be one. And then P, W, K, E, W is probably three again. So you could probably pick like K, E, yeah, W, K, E. And like always scroll down to the constraints because that can really change the algorithm that you're doing. So we have 10 to the fourth times five. If you're looking at big O notation, whatever algorithm you just decide to do, it's basically going to loop over 10,000 times. So this could potentially cause it to be slow if you're doing like an n squared algorithm. Maybe an n squared algorithm can solve this without failing with like time limit exceeded. So we're gonna try to do that first and see if um, that works. If not, there might be some other heuristic way that you have to kind of like split this string up. But to me, this screams like a sliding window type of thing. And what do I mean by sliding window? We're gonna take the first example and just paste it down here. And we're gonna go ahead and pretend like we have two iterators. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say we have an arrow pointing and that'll be I. And then we're also gonna have an arrow pointing that could be J, okay? Actually, I'm gonna put the J over here so we can kind of keep track of the last substring that we started off. So typically a sliding window algorithm is you have this incrementer that is going to slide over and then try to find like the longest substring. So if you kind of like, uh, we'll do this one. So I is the starting point and J is what you're gonna keep on like adding on to it. So you're gonna start at I and then you're gonna take A. So then you wanna actually move this one over one and you're gonna take B. And right now we probably, every time we take a character, we need to check to see if it exists in some type of map. I think having some type of lookup table, uh, you could just do like a normal like JavaScript set. Um, so I'll just do like a set right here. And every time we get an A, we can just push into the set. And then we get a B, we're gonna push into the set. So now the set has an A and it has a B. And then we're gonna move this over again. We got a C and check, hey, is C already in the set? No, let's push it in. And then we're gonna go ahead and append that there. And then we're gonna move this forward one more, which leads us to A and say, hey, does A exist in this set? And it does. So we know that the longest substring with the I starting here is three. ABC, right? So now what you do is you increment this thing forward one, and then you do it all over again. So, so we revert back J, and then we're gonna go ahead and just put this to the side. We know that the longest we found so far is a three, okay? And then we're gonna clear out the set, and we're gonna do it again. So B, does B exist in the set? No, so push it in. We move this forward, we get a C. Does C exist? No. And then we push it forward again. A, does A exist? No. We add it to the set. And then we move it forward again. B, it already exists. So we need to break out of this loop. And again, we found another substring, BCA length of three. So I think this is the algorithm I would try to use to solve this problem first. And hopefully it is fast enough to not exceed that 10 to the fourth, which I believe would be 10,000. So at the worst case scenario, you'd have like 10,000 times um, 10,000 basically. Paste this here and put some comments here so I can visualize it. So 100 million, I think this should still run pretty fast on a computer. I think this should still be under like what most of these challenges are. Um, I think when you start getting to a billion, that's when stuff starts to really slow down. So I think the, the big O notation would be N squared for the sliding window algorithm. And N I would say is 10,000, so I think we should be good. But if this doesn't work, I'm probably just gonna call it a night and publish the video anyway, because I don't wanna have to re-record everything to make it look like I'm smart. Uh, we're just gonna do our best. So to do this algorithm, again, we have a starting point. So I'll say const, or actually I need to say let i is equal to zero, let j is equal to zero. 
And then we basically want to loop over s. So I could say for let um, i equals zero, i less than s dot length i plus plus. In case, I actually don't need this let i here. Let's get rid of that. In fact, I probably could do the same thing. I'm going to do another for loop here. I'm a bit rusty at solving these problems, so like, give me some grace. So I'm going to set j equal to zero. And then what we want to do is we want to set, actually, no, we want to set j equal to i because we want it to start at the current position of this. And I think we can continue to kind of loop through until we get to the very end. So I'm going to go ahead and say j less than s dot length and then j plus plus. So we just basically do that algorithm we did over here where we have the j start at the i and then we're incrementing the j over and over again. So a couple of things that are kind of go through my mind, I know I'm jumping all over the place. Um, the first thing is we need to keep track of the longest. So I'll say let longest is equal to math.min. I think that's how you do it, is it math.min? Honestly, I don't remember. In fact, you might just be able to make this a zero, honestly, because like you're at least going to get one character, which means that your longest will be, um, oh, actually no, zero. This could potentially be zero length. So again, make sure you keep track of the constraints. So if s length is equal to zero, return zero. I'm just going to put that little hack there so I don't have to think about it anywhere else. But if the string of zero is passed in, like just go ahead and return zero. Okay, so longest. It's going to be zero. We're going to do that whole double loop thing. And then we want to basically make a set here. So I can say const set is equal to new set. And then as we get through this string, we can say s.care at, hopefully that's a an instant lookup time of the string. I think you can also do this if you wanted to. I could say i plus j. I think that'll also give you the character at that string location, if I remember my JavaScript correctly. Um, but basically, we want to get the character, and then we want to say if the set already has this character, which I think has should be the keyword. Funny, you like have TypeScript, but there's no autocomplete, so it doesn't even help out. I think it's has. Oh, add and has and clear. Those are the three things we probably want, has, add, and clear. So if it has C, um, we probably want to break early. So I could just go ahead and say break. And then um, otherwise, we could just go ahead and increment it. So I'm going to go down here and say set.add C. And then I'm going to say longest. Oh, I need to keep track of the current length that we're at. So I think I could say if i minus, or sorry, if j minus i is greater than longest, because again, you know, I should probably say j minus i plus one is greater than longest. And we're going to say longest is equal to j minus i plus one. And then we could just go ahead. I don't think we have to keep track of the string that we found. It might be useful to print that out so we can actually debug this. But over here, that we're making a new set every single time. Um, we basically get the character as we're incrementing j. And then we're checking the character here. We check if it's in the set. If it is, we can just go ahead and break out because we assume that we've already found like the longest thing here. We're kind of keeping track of it. Let's just go ahead and return longest. Honestly, I need to like look at the code to make sure we're doing it right. I'm going to zoom out one too. Um, let's try this out. I'm going to go ahead and just also add an empty string for that test case, and then I'm going to click run. This is probably going to fail miserably. Okay, it did work for some of these things. So test case one did pass, test case three also did pass, and four we got going, but this is printing two for some reason. So I do think we have an off by one error, which we'll have to figure out how to solve that. Okay, so what I would recommend doing is like take this, and again, let's go back to the drawing board and try to make sure that our algorithm that we have actually makes sense on paper. I feel like we're close, but like there's just something that um, we're getting wrong here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just like delete all this other stuff. We're gonna look at our code and then we're gonna bring in the BBB case, right? So we'll BBBB. How does this work? So we're gonna look through and see, we start with longest equal to zero, I is equal to zero. So again, we'll bring in those like, uh, I will be here up top, J can be here. And then we want to go ahead and just draw some arrows so you guys can follow along. Group those together. So i is 0 and j is 0. We have a new set. We're going to get 
s of i plus j, so that'll be zero, which will give us b. If the set has b already, we break out, otherwise we add it to the set. And then we are going to check if zero minus zero plus one is greater than longest, then we're gonna set longest equal to that value. So this should have gone here, added this to the set, and then longest should be set to one at this point. And then we're gonna keep on going forward. We're gonna go increment this, and then we're gonna go ahead and increment the j by one. S of i plus j should give you index one, which should give back character c. And then if, or sorry, give you character b. If the set already has b, then we're gonna break out, which should end this whole for loop. And that should work. So I'm wondering if maybe like it falls apart at a certain point. So if you break out a j here, that's basically just gonna increment i going to do the same thing. We're going to clear the set out. We do the same logic and we get longest of one. We move it forward and we break out again. And then eventually, let's just go to the very end. Maybe like there's an issue at the very end of how this is all working. So we start here with i is going to be length minus one. J is also length minus one. And we basically need to add. Oh, you know, I think my issue is right here. It's not i plus j. It's just j right? That's, that's a dumb mistake. Okay, so I think this actually just needs to be J. I'm going to run this. I have a good hunch that that's the issue. Make sure that test case passes. Okay, that's working. Let's just submit it and see if all the test case passes. That was a dumb mistake. But again, this is why you want to read through your code and double check it and debug it that way. Okay, so this solution performed terribly. And I guess I wonder if there are faster ways that we could speed this up. But I think this solves it, which is good. I might actually submit it again. Sometimes when you run it the first time, you just get very, very bad results. Um, nope, my code just sucks. Okay. So again, what did we learn from watching me do this? You should try to step through your algorithm on paper. If you don't have a debugger, step through it by paper. And then eventually you might see an issue. Um, the issue with mine was right here. It's not I plus J. J is already at the index. And so I should have just done character of J to get back the B instead of whatever dumb logic I was doing there. Which also makes me wonder if the J minus I, is that potentially going to be wrong though? I think it will give me the, the distance or the length between these. So I think we should be good. Okay, so is there a way that we can speed this up? Because that's always something you should try to think about doing when you're solving these problems. It's like, how do I make this faster? And what is so slow about my algorithm? And how do they make theirs more efficient. One thing I would say is probably not recreating the set every time. Like I could move this out here and I can say set.clear out there. That would hopefully speed it up a little bit. I don't know if it's going to make it that much faster. We're 18 and 17% there. And then with that change, it did make the runtime a little bit faster. So now we're 21%. A couple of things, s.length, I mean, that should be a hard coded thing. I guess I'd also ask like, what is this comparing to? Is it comparing against all other TypeScript submissions, or is it comparing against just like what I have? Okay, so doing that, it did say that we have an n-square time complexity. Uh, I guess that kind of makes sense. Now let's go to other solutions because I want to see if I can try to figure this out. I'm going to go ahead and just say TypeScript and see if we can get some other things. It looks like there is an n times complexity solution to this. Um, I have to read through this. I don't have the mental capacity at this point to really understand this. But the fact that he's doing it in a single for loop, maybe there is some different way. So if you go back to that example, maybe instead of having two incrementers, you can actually pick a starting location and then you start grabbing the characters from the right of that. So we'll get length of two and then we'll get length of three and then it breaks there. But then I wonder if you can do some type of heuristic to like basically expand this one out that way and keep adding to it because you know that the longest from C was three, but now it's a matter of like, okay, you could probably move this one over one. Let's, let's pretend like I was actually over here. So we're going to say, grab the C, grab the A, grab the B. We can't go this way anymore. So we're actually going to move this one back, but then we're going to move this one. We can't go this way either. Okay. So then we basically need to um, move that forward again.
In looking at this solution, I mean, like, it doesn't seem like it's n squared because it's incrementing i by 1 every time, but then j only goes so far and then it basically has to stop. Um, unless the string was, like, all b's, like a ton of b's. But I, I would be curious, like, if I had time, I'd implement that solution and see that's, if that's kind of, like, how it's working. In fact, we have ai. Um, he doesn't explain how it's faster. He says a short circuit evaluation. Let's go to cursor real quick. I'm going to paste this in. Okay, so the main idea is we use a sliding window approach. We keep track of a window of characters that do not repeat. When we find a repeating character, we move the start of our window to after the first occurrence of that character. When we find a repeating character, we move the start of our window to the after the first occurrence of that character. Let's use this example. Um, step one. We have seen A, step two, we've seen AB, step three, ABC, and then it looks like we move the sliding window of three. We see A again, we remove LI to, or we move LI to one. So now we have A of three, B of one, C of two, longest is three. The key logic when we see a character we've seen before, seen right before is true. We move the left index to after the first occurrence of that character we do not move the right index r you know what i'm too tired to really understand this but there is a faster solution if you were smart enough you can figure it out um but i'm not so i hope you guys enjoyed have a good day and happy coding